Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here. I hope you're having a great day. Mr. Tonic Amps, one of our fearless moderators on our Discord, suggests top five covers that are more interesting, compelling, or just plain better than the original. And I wanted to kind of modify that and say, these are covers that defy genre. At the end of the day, I'm in the, firmly in the camp that if you can't sing it, and just play it on guitar or with the piano, then you don't have a song. And so these are my top five examples of that. Just so you know, everything on this channel is user-driven. And so you get access to this Discord as a thank you for me um, for taking my lessons on guitargate.com. That's the first link in the description. And you'll notice I don't do sponsored content. Uh, I don't do brand deals. I just want to be pointed in the direction of the good music. Now... First one on my list is In the Pines. Uh, you might know it as Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Now, the version that I think we all know and love and adore, the most famous one, is Nirvana. It's Kurt Cobain absolutely bearing his whole soul in the Unplugged series. But no one really knows where the song came from. This is a perfect example of music being passed down and shared over time. Lead Belly made it famous first, so to speak, if you will. But then, my man, you know, Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys also had a big hit with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few things that each of these artists did differently and how they kind of adapted the tune to their style. So we'll first start with Lead Belly. My girl, my girl, don't lie to me. Tell me, where did you sleep last night? Come on, tell me, baby. Come on, tell me. In the ponds, in the ponds, where the sun don't ever shine. I was shivered all night through. I mean, hauntingly good. Let's talk about the guitar, because again, this is a music channel. We're going to learn something. Grab your guitar. We're in the key of E. Right? Now, what's cool about this, what makes Lead Belly's version different uh, than how Bill Monroe did it and certainly how Kirk Cobain did it, is check this out. You got E, going to the fifth to B, A, G major, okay? That is your flat three chord. For all you non-music theory nerds, in the key of E, G sharp is your major third. So having a G in here immediately mixes major and minor. That's the sound of the blues for, for lack of going deeper, right? But, but the second time around, he brightens it up and goes major. So you got. Five. Pulling on that two right there. Into that flat three. But the second time. major third open very cool thing that uh i really only picked up on the lead belly version and he is tuned down a little bit now what makes kurt's version so magical is that one uh yes it is in a different key it's actually in e flat but this is a really common thing that artists do uh, they just tune their guitars and everything down a half step to save the vocals. And generally, they just do live shows like that. So he's still playing it in E position, which you'll see. But it sounds like E flat. And of course, he doesn't do that move to the major third and keeps it very power chord based. He's not really playing a lot of the full chords. But that's not the point. That's, that's Kurt focusing on the vocals. And that's the part which I think resonated with us so deeply is this acapella break, which he adds in here, is not in any other version. And he literally bears his soul. And it just, it just is one of the most haunting things that I think has ever been captured. And it's why it had to be number one on my list. Hit the button. My girl, my girl, where will you go? I'm going where the cold wind blows. In 
the pines, in the pines where the sun don't ever shine. I would shiver the whole night through. My girl, my girl, don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? In the pines, in the pines where the sun don't ever shine. I would shiver. That part where he takes the breath in there is one of the best captured musical moments of all time. Okay, next up on my impossible list is Killing Me Softly with his song. Now, again, you know, the the origin of the song is there's some contention there. Uh, if you go to Wikipedia, it says Charles Fox and Norman Gimbel wrote it. But... After a lot of research, it looks like it's actually Lori Lieberman that wrote it after a Don McLean concert. Now, I don't know the answer, but Roberta Flack made it big in 73 with it. But then Fuji's, featuring Miss Lauren Hill, made it one of the biggest songs of all time. And I chose this one because this is one where talk about the song standing on its own and the arrangement being completely changed, where I'm not even going to show you anything on the guitar. First thing that you'll notice with Lori Lieberman's version is she starts out with the verse. It's her guitar and piano, and it's this beautifully floaty, melodic thing, and she just has an absolutely tremendous vocal performance. And then when we get to the Fuji's version, you're going to hear that there's basically nothing there. And I almost never play studio tracks, but I wanted to focus on this because one, they start with the hook. That's a purposeful thing that they did. And two, it's almost all bass, drums, and Lauren Hill just searing in the stratosphere. They basically removed everything else because of how strong the song is. Check it. that change. I heard he sang a good song. I heard he had a star. And so I came to see him to listen for a while. And there he was, this young boy, a stranger to my eyes, strumming Piano work. Singing my life with his words, killing me softly with his song, killing me softly with his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly with his song. My two cents. I believe her singing it, that she wrote it. If it walks like a duck, right? Now check this out. Now, again, this is the studio version, but they start, they choose to start with the hook. But what I really want you to pay attention to is the one side was a 
very rich instrumental. There's so much movement underneath. It's beautiful. And the Fugees, they ripped all that out, gave it heavy drums and bass, and just let Lauren be Lauren. And it's, it's one for the ages. I heard he sang a good song. No bass yet. I heard he had a style. And so I came to see him and listen for a while. And there he was, this young boy, stranger to my eyes. it that one part before the bass came in where you heard the little push the key change you didn't even need it she just nailed it one of the best of all time to do it period don't care what you say not up for debate next up my friends is i will always love you dolly parton and whitney houston now um you know one of the most famous songs of all time. Uh, Dolly did this first in 73. And I love Dolly Parton. I mean, the voice, just the clarity, and her songwriting. She's got so many hits. Like, Dolly has a serious catalog of hits. All you guys sleeping on all those old tracks, go take a listen. There's... So many, I, I could have picked so many songs that she wrote that became big covers. But the reason I chose this one and what I want to point out to you um, is that Whitney, look, look, Whitney is the voice. You want to know what, you know, the show is modeled after the voice, like who is the voice? It's Whitney Houston. It's Whitney Houston. Um, and, you know, she made this song, one, probably one of the greatest vocal intro ever. The tease that she would do it live is, I mean, no one else can really do it, right? And own the audience the way she can. Come on. Uh, but it also features arguably the greatest key change in popular music history Agree? Disagree? Drop it in the comments. As far as the harmony, they keep the same basic arrangement, with the exception, again, of Whitney's uh, very long extended vocal intro. But it's, Dolly does it in the key of A, so one, six, F sharp minor, five, four, D and E like that. And it, it switches for the chords. Oh, sorry. So for the verse, it kind of descends, and for the chorus, it ascends. Whitney, at least the version that I'm going to show, is a half step lower, an A flat. Same changes, but when she comes in to do the crescendo, everything goes up a whole step to A sharp or B flat, whatever speed you're feeling today. Um, and so check this out. First, Dolly with the original, 1974. Check it. <laughs> I 
I mean, perfect. And you know what I like about it, too? I like... And Whitney does it the same way. I like how this is from an era where it's not like... I've, there's this f famous Amy Winehouse interview where she talks about how um, the strong... The, there was something about the strong women of previous musical generations that didn't do what t you see people do today, which is, I don't need you. I don't want anything. I'm strong enough to be on my own. In fact, it's the opposite. It's... I'm going to lay down on the street for you. I can't live without you. Like, I will always love you. I just love that because that I understand, right? Obviously. So now watch Whitney hit what I consider to be the greatest key change ever. And she just nails it in the way that only she can. No, we're doing that again. Look at the confidence. By the way, the band has stopped. As a, as, a, as a vocalist, you're listening for the bass. You're listening for something to give you that pitch, and you hear it in your head. The band comes to a complete standstill. She's got her arms up. They're waiting for her, and she comes dead on the note. I mean, you can't, you, 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 she is the voice. Okay, I'm sure you all saw this one coming. This is Hurt, Nine Inch Nails, written by Trent Reznor, uh, adapted by Johnny Cash. Perhaps the greatest crossover between two artists, uh, genre-wise? I don't know. Light me up in the comments. Like, if you know... If you know one <laughs> more different than the other, which had which resonated with more people, I mean, I just don't know. Now, here's what's so cool about this. Trent wrote this, or at least he performed it first, on piano, right? And he has some fantastically dark chords. It is very cool. So then when Johnny chose to play it, he stripped it down, he changed the key, and uh, made it more accessible. He took away this dark thing, but the way he sings it is almost darker and more disturbing than the way Trent sings it. It's, it's, this is a really important moment in musical history. So check it out. We're going to start with Trent doing it live on piano. And here's what I want you to listen for. We're in B minor, but he comes in with this. Listen to that flat five. Just create this complete feeling of uneasiness. I hurt myself. Isn't one of the most powerful 
pieces of poetry, right, to start a song. I've never heard one. I've never heard one. I mean, the needle tears a hole, the old familiar sting, right? See, but I remember. I try to put it all away, but I remember everything. Love it, okay? And tell me, tell me this. That doesn't absolutely make it. One, <laughs> flat three, four. Suspends these chords. <laughs> Adds in a D up there, just in case you didn't get minor enough with your B, right? It's just so haunting. But then check out how Johnny does it. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. What an opening line. I focus on the pain, the only thing that's real. Mm. The needle tears a hole. The old familiar sting Try to kill it all away But I remember everything <laughs> It's just, it's so powerful. Even if you've never been that person that Trent was writing about and Johnny's singing about, you know someone. And you know whether they could ever put words to it, that that's exactly how they were feeling. Just to see if I still feel the pain. Unbelievable. Johnny, again, moves it to A minor. And there's some production stuff happening, but he still sometimes hammers on the major third and F sharp, but I like it. Um, in D major, which is F sharp. I like it. How floaty it is. You know, and so it, it kind of harkens back to what Trent was doing with those suspended things. But he got rid of that flat five. But just the way he sings it, it's like an old man would sing it, right? Almost like maybe he wasn't that person but he lost a son or a daughter that was, it's different and it's just as powerful, but it's like almost, there's like a wisdom to it almost, you know, like an admonition is there instead of a confession. It's like, I mean, it's amazing. Only other thing that, I'll, that I want you to pay attention to when you listen to that, um, Trent says crown of shit in the second verse where Johnny says crown of thorns. Little things you might consider changing you want to be on the radio. All right, my friends, we've reached the last one. Now, there are so many contenders. I mean, shoot, just Nirvana. I mean, the Tori Amos doing Smells Like Teen Spirit, Sturgill doing the In Bloom version. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, Sinead O'Connor or the Chris Cornell, nothing compares to you. There's, there's, so, there's so many obvious choices, some low-hanging fruit, okay? But I chose this one because, again, these couldn't be more different genres. And it just goes to show you, one voice, one instrument, one song connecting generations. This is Changes, written by Black Sabbath, okay? Black Sabbath, covered by Charles Bradley, doing it soul style. Here's what to pay attention to. They kept it in the same key. Kept it in the key of C. T totally respected the original version. Tony, very famously, played the keyboard part in 3-4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Where Charles, the one thing he does, coming from like the soul world, he slows it down a hair. And it distinctively gives it the feel of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Six, one. Now, these are both 
equal subdivisions, meaning you're both dividing by three equally. It's a, it's a triplet feel. But Charles gives it that little, like that, it just that little change in the arrangement allows him to make it his own. And that doesn't take a damn thing away from Ozzy, because this is actually one of, in my opinion, one of their very best songs. And I don't know how many others actually featured Tony on piano and certainly playing in three, like a waltz. Check it out. Love this part. I'm going that little lift. I'm going Playing by Tony Iommi, by the way. By the way, if anybody knows in the comments that maybe that isn't him playing piano, let me know. But I've seen footage of him doing it. Um, but just a killer, killer song. Now, check out Charles. Now, again, you could make the case that the other one is felt in 6 or even 12 and whatever, okay? This feels swampier to me. And the swampier you get, the more I feel the subdivisions, right? The less it becomes three, even the less it becomes six, it can just keep going, right? And I know that's not like a really firm musical thing, but those of you that know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Hit it. Look at it, look at it, look at it. I feel unhappy. Okay, the microphone shake. I feel so sad I have lost the best friend That I ever had She was my woman look, look. I love her so He means it But it's too late now I let her Tell him. Listen, now. Yeah, listen, listen. I'm going to change it. To change it. I'm going to change it. Oh, it hurts so bad. I mean, it's just so good. And I love that he added the in my life, in my life. He's doing these little things to make it his own. And that's it, my friends. That's my top five genre crossing covers where you get the song, you get the voice, you get an instrument, and you get a song that is bigger than any one genre, any one time period. Please. Light me up in the comments. Let me know what I forgot. If you dig the vibe of this channel, please hit subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. And again, um, everything on this channel 
is user driven. I don't do sponsored videos. I don't do brand deals, you know, with no money exchanged. My students on GuitarGate get to pick what comes next. And so if you're interested, if you're a guitar player, you want a little more of the theory behind the stuff and learning the fretboard, I'd love the opportunity to teach you something and be one of your online teachers. If that interests you, hit the first link in the description. That is the best way to support this channel. I love you all very much. Take care, and I'll see you around the way. Cheers.